Uh, we're going to turn to God's Word here now, and uh, we have scripture reading. I'm going to invite uh, Lancho, and uh, Pastor Jose is not going to get too comfortable. He's going to come back up here uh, to, uh, for some scripture reading here in uh, Oromo and English and Spanish. Okay, our scripture reading is uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 24b, which is like the second part of the verse, to 26. But God had, has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts elected so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now for, let's read it in Spanish. If you want to follow along, there's um, Spanish Bibles. Might be one in front of you, at least in the, in the seats in front of you. Primera Corintios 12, 24, B al 26. Así Dios ha dispuesto los miembros de nuestro cuerpo, dando mayor honra a los que menos tenían, a fin de que no haya división en el cuerpo, sino que sus miembros se preocupen por igual unos por otros. Si uno de los miembros sufre, los demás comparten su sufrimiento, y si uno de ellos recibe honor, los demás se alegran con él. Ok, I'll be reading the same thing with a different language in Oromo. I thought I was already making a mistake. No, no. <laughs> uh, this is already also terrifying, so, but I'll just, I'll just read it. So here it goes. Go and toast kofa, la kosa di dami, la kosa kralam, di dami afu. Wa kaiyo bu an agna nama inu ufatam ufata chala akar gatu fuliti ome. Inu ome s gar gar akaba an agna girduti utu argaman kite tuli isanif akka ya danif gode. Bon Agnanama Cas, Kesa Nitoko Yo Ipate, Hun Isa Jew Jenny Pachuni, Tok Ulf Toko Ulfate, Hun Isa or Jenny Gamud. Isn't that great? Hey, thank you, Lancho. Thank you, Jose. You know, the beauty as we uh, start this, we're in this sermon series called One Body. The truth didn't change. The language changed, but the truth was the same. Same with Jesus Christ as he transcends every culture and space and speaks into our differences. He's one truth, the same person, and he binds us all together. And he is what makes us one. As we've been going through this uh, sermon series, The Body of Christ, we're exploring this because the body of Christ is significant, it's powerful. You see, God brings us together through Jesus to create a community that changes us. But this community, this little space, as we look around here and you see the, the faces here, these beautiful people here, and those of you out there online, technology is great because you're still connected. You're still part of the body, even though you're online, that we are one body, that while we're being changed, God uses this to change the world. This isn't a small thing, us Grace Community Church gathered together. The church, God's people, are profound and powerful. Today's text, as they read out of it, if you want to turn there in your Bibles or Bible apps, it's uh, 1 Corinthians 12. I'm going to be reading through or, or walking through verses 14 through 26 if you want to follow along. As we have been walking through Corinthians here, and the challenges that they faced were individualism. Individualism, as it affected the church and crippled God's people from realizing the impact, both personally and in their context. I want to start off with an image here. We, we have any uh, families here with two-year-olds, three-year-olds still in the house? We got, we got some of those in the house there. Let's, I just want to, we, we just need to honor the fact that you're here. 
that you showed up is awesome. Because having two-year-olds and three-year-olds is a lot of work. There's a lot of independence that goes along with that. There's a lot of no's and mine and I don't want to. And maybe some of you are feeling this way, both husbands and wives, both daddies and, and mommies. You imagine for a moment with me uh, uh, walking into a room of two to three-year-olds. They've been left alone, 22 year three, two to three-year-olds. They've been left alone for like 30 minutes. No adult supervision. I'm already seeing some faces cringing. <laughs> Walking into the, what do you suppose you're going to see when you walk into that room? Lord of the Flies? You're going to see just chaos and, and craziness. You're going to see one group of kids that's like making evil machinations and plans to, you know, overtake the rest of the group or, or, or somehow to break out and get, you know, do something naughty. Like, you know, you got kids just running around doing everything that's crazy. <laughs> you know, disregard for each other. Who knows if you accidentally smack another kid? Like, you're just doing your own thing. Two-year-olds love to be just independent. It's all about me. That would just be crazy. Chaos, right? That's kind of what the church was going through in, in Corinth, is everybody was just doing their own thing. It was all about me. You imagine a church full of just a bunch of two-year-olds. No bueno. That means no good. The church isn't to be filled with people who are just independently doing all different things on their own, doing their own thing. The church, its health, our success, our effectiveness depends on us being different, but interconnected. Our health, our success, the power of realizing Christ's purpose in us depends on us being different and interconnected. We're going to unpack that here today. How does that happen? All right, if you haven't turned there in your Bibles, go ahead and do so. I'm going to start at verse 14, 1 Corinthians 12 through 26. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. The foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body. And that would not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye can't say to the hand, I don't need you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we do still greater honor. Or our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body to give by giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we ask for you to move in, in on our hearts and open our minds to your word. We need you. You have brought us into this thing you call the body, the church. You have brought us together to be one, though we are so different. And, and it's only you that makes this possible. We need you, Spirit. Work that in us. Lord, that, that we don't bring shame to your name, that, that we don't dishonor what you are trying to do, not just in us, but in, for the whole world. For your glory. In your name we pray. Amen. As I mentioned, jumping into this 
context, into this scenario here. Some of you are, are here uh, maybe uh, uh, for the first time or you haven't been here in a while and, and we're jumping right in here. And, and this letter called the, the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, is a letter to a church that is just messed up. Last year, I, or last week, not last year, last week I said they put the funk in dysfunction. All right, they are, they are broke as a church. And they're all about all about me. They're, 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 they're caught up in comparisons with each other of, of how I'm better because, you're less than because, or you all need to be like me. You all should be a certain way. And Paul is, is writing to explain, no, this is what the church really is. And we all have, to some level, distortions in our minds about what does it mean to be the church? What does it mean to be God's people? As a fundamental psychological reality, we act on what we believe. Not what we say we believe, what we actually believe. We act on what we believe. We want to believe the truth, to experience God's glory, his goodness, his power in this space, the church. This problem of individualism wasn't just, isn't just limited to the Corinthians. This is a problem that's really significantly present here today in our culture. You can look up, I, I encourage you, look up a phenomenon called expressive individualism. Expressive individualism, look it up. It's a cultural phenomenon that's, that, that, that permeates our, our culture here in the United States. Things like, you be you. Be true to yourself. Follow your heart. Find yourself. These little slogans come from this phenomenon called expressive individualism, where uniqueness trumps unity, group participation. In fact, being a part of a group should only be united around the concept of everybody just be yourself. It's built on this sense of independence. Do your own thing. You be you. There's a reaction to any kind of sense of, of a group informing or shaping or directing individual lives. This plays itself out, and I'm going to do what I'm going to do. That the group can is secondary. The individual, me, my family, is primary. This has led to a culture, like when it comes to God's people, being God's people, that, that, that this is a, it's optional to be part of God's people. Like, this is just another, another club. It's like the YMCA. It's like the, the Elks. It's just another club. They exist for me to express my individualism, to experience myself, but not for me to sacrifice for. Not that I need the group. So as a result, we have distortions even in our culture today that affect the meaning, the power that exists here. Churches are just merely an option. There's not a sense of commitment. But what makes the church? As Paul is explaining here in Corinthians, as we get to the text here, He's talking about, in verse 13, one spirit you were baptized into one body, Jews, Greeks, slaves are free, and all were made to drink of the one spirit. It's because of Jesus Christ. We exist here not for a good time, not merely for a social gathering and a networking, not merely as a place to just uh, uh, get our personal needs met. We're called to get, we're brought together for Jesus, because of Jesus, for his honor and his glory, to, to give to others because we have been so blessed by Jesus himself, we want to give. We want to create community. We want others to experience the love and welcome that we share. That he embraced me. I, I want to embrace others. It's a completely radical perspective on gathering together. 
as a result of the work of Jesus, it, it, it creates certain dynamics here that the, in the world, it just doesn't work. We talked about last week how there's government can lay out policies and, and, and for, for inclusivity and diversity and all these things, but they're never going to work because you can't change a person's heart with policy. It requires the person of Jesus Christ that changes hearts. Amen? So Paul comes in in this first portion here in verses 14 through 19, and he's talking about how important it is that we are all different and not the same. People in the, in the church there at Corinth were, 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 were trying to claim that you need to be like me. You need to have the same kind of gifting and, and abilities that I have. You need to become like me. There's not room for difference. But in the work of God, in his church, difference and diversity in the body is good. Difference and diversity are God's design. Your uniqueness. All the things that the world may say that cause you to be an outsider and you're not like others are reasons God says you belong. Everyone belongs in the body of Christ. The church cannot be the same. Otherwise, we'd look like Mike Wazowski. You know, if we were just all one big I, it'd be a monstrosity, right? If we were mostly just one part of the body. That's what Paul's trying to explain. It makes no sense for us to be all one part of the body. It just doesn't work very well. I, he doesn't even have a nose. Like, he's missing out. In Christ, our differences are not forces of division. They're not deficiencies. There's beauty in variety. We all have a place to belong in the body. Oftentimes, we might feel, well, I'm not like them, so I'm not, I'm just not significant. We place our value in comparisons. God made you. God made you, each one of you, where you are, as you are. And you might see some, you might be more focused on your limitations. You might be more focused on what you can't do. But God has designed you. He wants you. He loves you. And you are significant because he has made you in your uniqueness. And that uniqueness makes the group better, makes the church better. I like these Truths from uh, 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 so, uh, some of these biblical scholars here. You can go to the next slide. Leon Morris, these are all guys who are just experts on, on the scriptures and, he, and, and, and on this passage especially. He says, Leon Morris says, diversity is no accidental attribute of the body. Gordon Fee says, Paul's concern for their unity, it, Paul's concern is for their unity, but there is no such thing as true unity without diversity. That's kind of a mic drop. There is no such thing as unity without diversity. We confuse unity with what we call uniformity. We all look the same. Uniformity, we look, we sound the same, being the same. That's not God's design. We just look around. It's just obvious the way God has made us. This is what makes the church so radical and so different. That we can be different and yet we can be one. By not becoming like each other, we are one because of one person, Jesus. As we become like that one person, Jesus, in our hearts, in our character. This is part of something so much bigger and so much greater than us, a spiritual reality that we need to realize behind the scenes. And this is going to get a little bit deeper. Hang with me here on this. You've probably heard the term Trinity or the triune God. 
Like this, this, this may be confusing, but this is so important. The way God's nature is, as Father, Son, and Spirit, He's one God, yet three persons. He lives eternally in community. God made us in His image. He made us to be in community, to be different and yet one. Marriage is a model of this. He said the two will become one flesh. A man and a woman, a husband and a wife, they're different. Did you know that? Guys and girls are different. Did you know that? They are. The two will become one. Made in God's image. This is part of God's community, his design, that we are different, and yet we're together. In culture, around the world, we emphasize one over the other, of, of, of being you, individualism, or being together, but that they don't both exist. That's only possible through Jesus. And it's because he made us in his image to live this out. He lives as love and community, the Father, Son, and Spirit, together as one, exist in eternal love and community. We're made to live this out. Listen to this. The one God who is himself characterized by diversity within unity has decreed the same for the church. This creates so much significance that what we are about here, what's happening here, is telling the world about the one true God. Either we're telling the world lies and dishonoring him, or we are a foretaste. We are a sample. We, we, we're that, that, you know, when you go to the food court and it's that Chinese place and they're handing out the samples, and, uh, and, and you take one, they, what they want you to do is buy. Why are they giving out the samples? It's not because they care about you. Let's be honest. They want you to buy a meal there. They want you to taste how good they are and want more. Now, we care about people, right? You know, but we are to be a sample to the world. Wow, this is good. There's got to be more. There's got to be a reason why. It's because of God working himself out in us to save the world. That's pretty good stuff, right? This is significant. Now, Paul goes on here to unpack a, a deeper truth here and living this out, that we are, are to point to this, this thing, this, the, the Trinity, the one God, three persons. We are to live this out. How does this happen? Verses 21 through 26. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you nor the, hand, the head of, to the feet. I don't need you. When we are brought together through Jesus, we are t literally like tied together to each other. We need each other. You cannot be a fuller version of yourself without the others here. You cannot be who God made you to be without community. We need each other. Now, Paul in these verses is addressing the insecurity that some have, like, hey, I'm just, I'm just not as, as, as visible. I'm not like Pastor Scott. I can't communicate real well. I, 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 you know, I, I don't have a great, clear knowledge of the scriptures, and like, I fumble over myself. I'm going to make mistakes. Like, I'm not like him, so I'm not significant. I can't, I can't make an impact. That was what was happening, these comparisons you, don't, you shouldn't be like me. We don't need more Scots. I was waiting for it. I knew it was coming somewhere. We, we need you to be you for us. Some of you need to just address right now your comparisons and you have distanced yourself or not committed to the body or connected with the body because you don't think you're significant. You need to quit looking at your deficiencies. 
He's enough. You are worthy. You are of value because you're loved. Not because of what you do. You need to quit looking at what you don't have. If you've got a heart, Jesus will use you. And he's going to show you you have more than just a heart. But you open your heart to him and let him show you how much you're needed. You are needed. Some, some of you just need to listen in and take that and own that. You are needed. You're all caught up in being needy. You're needed. We need you to play your part. You, there's a problem. There, the, the, we don't realize how interconnected our body is and that when, you, when, when somebody doesn't play their part, when somebody doesn't realize their significance, the rest of the body suffers. We are interconnected. There's a, a, a illustration that was used, an ancient illustration, where um, I'm just going to read it because uh, it, it's better that way. So the way this goes, the stomach appeared to the other members of the body to be doing nothing but enjoying the food they put in it. How dare the stomach? enjoy the food that the rest of the body parts put in it. So, the other body parts agreed they would starve the stomach. They were going to show that stomach. Only to find that they were therefore dead themselves. Not realizing that they're connected to the body. They're connected to the stomach. And what happens to the stomach affects the rest of the body. When you consider this in your own, our own physical bodies, uh, you know, consider what happens when you stub your toe. There's a great image I have for you about stubbing your toe. You know, just... Oh, right? Do you see how that pinky is completely like sideways? Like some of you, now I want you to talk to me about your reactions. How many parts of your body experience what's on the screen here? Talk to me. Where did you feel this? You felt, some of you are like everywhere. It's everywhere. Was there an auditory response? Did, that, did I hear that? There was an, oh, right? So the mouth responded, right? You could feel the pain. Some of you are still feeling the pain, right? And some of you, like your hands respond. You're like, oh, my, right? There's, everything's interconnected, right? When one part of our body is affected, it affects the whole. We're interconnected. This got played out in the early church in Acts 2. This is like the automatic, what automatically happened because of Jesus bringing people together. This is what happened. Look at this. Acts 2, 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship. This fellowship is that koinonia term we talked about a couple weeks ago. This sharing of life to the breaking of bread, to the prayers. And all came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles' Now get this, all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. They had everything in common. What those words mean, everything in common, doesn't mean that they all, like, they all were wearing the same kind of clothes. They all were, no, that's not what we're talking. They, they, they all shared life. 
They shared their every aspect of their life together. And as Paul says here, when, when the body's functioning as it's supposed to, you're interconnected. When, you, when one part suffers, the whole body shares in that. We bear each other up in that. We carry each other through, this, through the losses, through the traumas, through the pains. And life. When one part of the body is honored, the rest rejoice. They're not jealous. Like, oh, man, I wanted that. Oh. They're like, yeah, praise God, that's awesome. We're so excited for you. The honor for one part is the joy for the others. When we're the body of Christ, we share in our lives, in our needs. We're interconnected. I have an illustration to, to just further uh, move this point along. I know we're going a little bit long here. Bear with me. I need just three other people to come join me up here. I need three volunteers. Okay, Rome, a pay, come on up. Henry, come on up. Yes, Eli, you can come up too. All right, guys, come on. Oh, Kaylee, you want to come up here as well? All right, here we go. I need you guys to each take a part of this big rubber band. Got this from being part of the moving company. Is, are, are we... Are we, oh, we're still coming. Okay, here we go. All right, all right. Come on up here, Kaylee. Nice. Okay, all right. Do you guys feel anything holding on here? No. You, you don't feel, any, feel anything? You don't feel anything? Me neither. You feel nothing? Nope. Like, yeah, hold on to it. Hold on to it. Okay, you notice how, like, like when we take hold of this, it's like taking hold of Jesus Christ. All right, you see how we're all connected? Yeah, yeah. All right, now do you notice how like, like there's a little bit of tension here, right? Yeah. Like, you know, when we start moving, like, hey, everybody starts moving, right? We start feeling it. Now, you guys just kind of hang out there and I'm just gonna take a few steps back. Oh, what's happening? <laughs> Whoa, what just happened, guys? I just told you to stay still, but you guys moved. Do, do it, oh, because I'm strong. <laughs> because I'm strong, do you hear that? Oh, yes. All right. So I'm just going to keep... Oh, oh, okay. Are, are you feeling that? No. You're not... Okay. A pay is illustrating what's wrong in the world. Okay. All right. So are you feeling this, Kaylee? Are you having a hard time holding on? Hold on. Hold on. Yep, you hold... Oh, Henry, I see you kind of tensing up. You see that? You get, oh, Eli's, oh, he's getting into, oh my, oh, whoa, watch out. Okay, it's getting serious. Okay, Eli, back down, just a few notches. Okay, thanks, bud. All right, now, are any of you beginning to feel some tension out there? Yeah, what, you feeling like, what's gonna, what might happen? Oh, yeah, what would happen, if, what, what do you think would happen if it broke? I don't know. Oh, you don't know. I think some people out there might know. Oh, you might get hurt. Yeah, yeah. How am I going to remedy this? What? How, how am I going to make this right? How, how am I going to release the tension? How do I? You want me to let go? Come back. Come back. Oh, that was powerful. Come back. Was that better? No. Do you want me to, do you want me to step back and just release it on you? No, no, no. Hold on. We are connected, right? Now, we have a tendency to not realize the power of our connectedness. And some of us are disconnected. We don't realize that's affecting everybody else. You know, when we respond in our relationships, say, like, there might be conflict. There might be an offense. And I start pulling away. What'd you feel? You felt tension, didn't you? That happens in the body. When we have problems, when we have concerns even, we have hurts and hang-ups, we start to withdraw. Like when we start to have personal issues in our lives, we start to isolate, right? Like we don't want other people to know about that. We start isolating and then what happens? The rest of the body, see? It happens to everybody. There's a party going on. Okay, you guys are amazing. Let's go take a seat. All right. They were awesome. How do we resolve that tension? Henry had it. Come closer. Come closer. You see, the work of Jesus, what makes different, 
in this place in us. Whether it's we got junk, sin, brokenness in our life, whether we got conflict that's, that's causing us to distance, maybe gossip, talk about other people or whatever it may be, or cut off relationships. Jesus calls us step forward, step towards others. Don't, don't, don't pull back in selfishness. Don't withdraw because you think you're insignificant. Don't, don't withdraw out of individualism. It's all about me. You're part of a body. You're part of a family. And when you step away, you affect everybody else. But through the love of Jesus Christ, through commitment to Jesus Christ, he compels us step toward each other, step towards the body. When we do that, when we follow Christ in that way, when we let the cross, it connects us. It's always pulling us towards each other as it pulls us towards God himself. May we be that space as a church. Let me finish here. I'm going to invite the worship team to come on up here. I want you to reflect on these questions up on the screen here. How are you relationally connected to the body of Christ? There's opportunities. If you're not already part of, say, a small group, a life group, come and talk to me. Showing up and just leaving here on a Sunday morning, that's not being connected. We're, we're more than just a place to show up and to get a little inspiration. We're family. We're a body. We're interconnected. And we've got to be intentional about that. How are you relationally connected? How are you connecting, connected through caring for others? It's not just about you. You're needed. How are you helping others feel welcome? How are you stepping towards others? And not just coming and looking, what are you going to give me? What am I going to get out of it? How am I creating welcome? How am I going to people I don't know? How am I opening my heart and my home to others? How are you functionally connected? We're going to get into this next week of looking at how are we wired and, and, and what does that look like to be a uh, part of the body? How are you functionally connected? Are, are, are you living out? Are you, what are you doing with your being? You're a human being, but you've got to do something with it. How are you acting as part of the body? and helping bring glory to Jesus. Reflect on these things here as we go into this final song. Holy Spirit, you have made us one body. Work it in us. We're constantly fighting against culture and the sin in us, Lord, that seeks to just pull us away and just, just focus on us as individuals, Lord. But you've made us part of this magnificent, radical community. Work it in us, Jesus. In your name we pray.